Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist. And today I'm going to try to show you how you can make this rope wrap um, geometry node setup that comes with my uh, nodes asset collection. I think if I tried to go through the whole setup in one video, it would be a really long video. So my plan today is just to go through some of the prerequisite nodes, um, which are other nodes in the node collection that um, are used in this rope wrap setup. But real quick, the rope wrap, what it does is you can have um, some mesh as an input and it works best if it's sort of a beam-like, a uh, long and long skinny type of uh, object and it will tie ropes around it basically. You can rotate them around. If we turn off precise here, it'll make it faster. And whatever you do, if you make more, it will just make interesting things pretty quick. So there are three other nodes that are used in the rope wrap node that come in that node collection. Um, I mean, actually there's some other ones, the perturb node I've mentioned before, it's pretty simple. It just adds noise. The curve to rope is a lot like the um, solidify curve with UVs and then the UV transform just transforms the UVs, those are all used in it as well. But um, I'm gonna go over more of the generative ones. And those three are the dashed line, edges between points, and the edge sag. All right, so let's start with the first one, which is dashed line. It's definitely the simplest of all of them. Um, dashed line is pretty cool. The We'll kind of see why when we get to the edges to point stone, but all it does is, um, creates a sequence of edges, basically. So there's probably a bunch of different ways you could do that. The way I'm doing it is we have as an input the number of edges that we want to create. So the edge count, which you can increase or decrease. And then that gets multiplied by two and put into a mesh line, which looks like this. And then, the, um, then we're going to delete half of the edges from the mesh line. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take the index and we're going to do modulo two, which modulo returns the remainder of a division. So we're going to divide by two and then get the remainder. So that'll alternate since it's two, it'll be when it's one, the remainder will be one. And when it's two, the remainder will be zero. So it'll be one, zero, one, zero, one, zero as the index increases. And then we just say, does the index equal one? If the index equals one, delete the edge and that gives us every other edge. So that is the dashed line modifier node group. Um, it's pretty simple, makes a dashed line. The second one is edges between points. Um, what it does is it takes either a point cloud or a bunch of vert or a mesh and then the vertices of that mesh and it will create random edges between some points in that point cloud or mesh. It has an, as an input um, the number of edges you want to create and then it will connect random vertices together based on that edge count. The way that works is we're going to take our cloud of points whether it's from vertices of a mesh or a point cloud from distribute points on faces or distribute points in volume or something like that and we're going to uh, first create a dashed line from that the node we just looked at and we're going to pick we're going to create a number of edges that's equal to the, the number of um, edges we want between our points so it goes way up there because it's set at 81 right now we set it to two we'll see it's just too long then we're going to set the position of the vertices in the dashed line to be equal to the position of points from our endpoint point cloud and the way we're going to do that is with a sample index node we're going to sample the position of a point that's at a random index, which we get with a random value node. The random value node should be in the, the range of zero to a maximum of the domain size. And since we want to support either a point cloud or a mesh, we have two domain sizes and we add the result of those together, which allows us to either put points in, an, in a mesh as vertices or um, input a point cloud from the distribute points on faces or something. Because you because you shouldn't have points 
from a point cloud and vertices from a mesh in the same geometry, we can just take both of them and add them together. One of them will be zero and then the value will be correct either way. And we're gonna pick a random index between zero and the maximum number of elements in the domain. And then we're gonna pass that to the sample index node. We're gonna sample the position of that point in the point cloud. And then we're gonna set the position of our vertex from our dashed line to that position. And then we can make as many edges as we want between points in the point cloud. So that's the edges between points node. The third node is edge sag. And you can see how if you have edges between points and you add another modifier to that and you choose edge sag, now you're starting to get spider webs and stuff, which is pretty cool. The, um, what edge sag does is it takes a mesh edge as an input and it outputs a curved or sagged curve um, that sags in a world space. So as you, if you rotate the object, it'll always sag down towards negative Z, or if you edit it in edit mode, it will also always sag down towards negative Z. So just to move through this node, how it works, we're going to start with our mesh edge as an input. Then um, we're going to convert the mesh to a curve and resample the curve so that there's a vertex in the center of the line. And then we're going to set the position of that vertex down in world space so that it's um, so that it sags. And the way we do that is by selecting the point that's not the endpoint. Also, I should mention the reason we're doing it this way and not, um, another way you could do it is say you could start with a point or a line and you could like extrude it with the nodes, those in a curve that hangs nicely between the start and end point. That's, that works pretty well and you can draw perhaps more accurate sags that way, but it's hard to make it work on any number of edges. And I really wanted this to be able to work on a bunch of edges. So you could make multiple edges and rotate them all different ways and have them be different sizes. And it could still draw, it could draw a curve for every single edge in the input. So that's why we're doing it this way and not like mathematically calculating a curve. Anyway, after having created that middle point and then lowering it down, then we can just resample the curve a bunch of times with at different resolutions, and that causes the curve to smooth out. And it's also surprisingly fast. All of these take hardly any time at all. And then finally, we can set it to just like a smooth curve and pick a resolution. So that's how the curve is generated, but there's one other detail that really sells the effect. And that's that when we have our, when we calculate our lowest point on the curve, if the angle of the input edge is sloped, we wanna slide that lowest point towards either the beginning or the end of the edge, depending on which is higher or lower and how much higher or lower it is. And so the way we're lowering this middle vertex is by using a set position node and we're setting that position to this vector. This vector contains all of the calculation for sliding that point side to side. So let's go through how that works. So the first thing that we wanna know is which way is down in the world. Um, you can ju also just make this work in object space. That's easy, you just add a vector and you set Z to negative one. That's down in local object space. Um, to get that to world space, all you have to do, this isn't truly to world space, it's to world direction, I guess, because it doesn't take into account location and scaling. But um, if we get the self, the object that this um, node is on, and we use that in an object info, we can get the rotation, and then we can rotate our downwards vector, negative one and Z, by the rotation of the object, and check this invert checkbox to do the opposite of that rotation. So that unrotates the down vector from object space back into world space, essentially. So that gets us down in the world. Then we want to know the direction of this edge. We, the way you do that is by subtracting the position of the first vertex from the position of the second vertex. 
and that will give you a vector that can draw a line from the first vertex to the second vertex. Then we're going to normalize that. So instead of drawing a line from the first vertex to the second vertex, it'll draw a line one meter or one unit towards it or in that in that direction because it sets the length of the vector to one. That's what normalize does. Then we're going to take the dot product of the world down direction and the direction of our edge. And the way dot product works when you're calculating the dot of two normalized vectors, so vectors with a length of one, um, if the two vectors match perfectly, you'll get a value of one. If the two vectors point in entirely opposite directions, you'll get a value of negative one. And if the two vectors are perpendicular to each other, you get a value of zero. So then you can imagine that since the world Z is down, currently this edge is pretty flat, so it's perpendicular. So our dot product would return a result of zero. But if we slope this somewhat, then depending on which vertex is the first vertex, say it's this one, we're gonna be pointing slightly up which is the opposite direction of the down. So we'll have a negative value. And the more perp and the more vertical this line gets, the more negative that value becomes until if it's perfectly straight up and down, it would be negative one. So, the cur so what the curve does is it takes the input value, which is in the range of negative one to one, and it shifts it so it's in the range of zero to one. And the curve is just to make it look kind of fancy and smooth. It also works fine if you just add one to the dot product and then divide it by two to get it into the zero to one range. Then all we have to do is um, mix our two vertex positions together. So we're essentially saying, do we want this vertex? How much of this vertex do we want? And how much of this vertex do we want? So the way the mix or the lerp works is this value here is gonna be anywhere between zero and one. If it's zero, we'd get the first vertex. And if it was one, we get the second vertex. And since our dot product returns negative one to one, which we're remapping to zero to one, if it's perfectly horizontal, which would be a result of zero on the dot product, we'd get 0.5, which would, should be directly between the two vertices. And then all we have to do is push that down by some amount. Then all that's left to do is decide how far down we should push the vertex. And that is simply done by taking the length of the vector so how far is it from this vertex to this vertex? And then we're multiplying that by our sag amount on the modifier. How much do you want to sag? Um, and then we're scaling the world down vector by that amount. So this, and then we're going to add that. So the mix node chooses so the mix node chooses to just slides the vertex back and forth on this line here. And then this scaled downward vector moves the vertex up and down in this direction. Well, it won't move it above the line, but it'll move it from here down. All right, anyway, then that combined, so then the result of those two vectors is added together. And then that combined vector is what's given to the curve to set the position of the middle vertex, which is, you know, maybe halfway to that vertex and then down by the sag amount. And then we resample it to smooth out, smooth it out into a curve. Um, and then set the spline type to smooth and increase the resolution if you want. Should probably expose that so you can tweak it, but that is what we got. So that. So those are the prerequisite nodes to building this monstrosity here. Um, so we'll call this part one, and in the next part, we'll talk about making the actual ropes. But you can see how it might work. We're gonna create points on our beams, and then we're gonna draw random edges between those points, and then we're gonna sag those edges so that they turn into curves, and then we're gonna turn those curves into ropes using the solidify curve. And then, um, yeah, that's basically the idea. The only other trick is making these looped tie-off bits and then making them also align themselves with the beam. That's a little bit tricky, but um, so yeah, we'll call this part one and then 
Uh, all these nodes are available in my node collection, which is on Gumroad for free. And um, if you want to give me something for it too, that's always appreciated. If you have any questions about what I covered, you can let me know. Um, I know, especially on that edge tag node, the vector math gets a little bit more, it's not really complicated, but it's definitely harder to explain. So it wouldn't surprise me if I didn't explain something well enough. Um, yeah, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching.